Okay, welcome, 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 my friends. And uh, today we have a new session and uh, we have a new topic uh, that we we'll discuss about the interstitial lung diseases, uh, which are abbreviated as the IROD, or someone can like as uh, DIPROD, which is uh, means the diffuse parenchymal uh, lung diseases. Uh, because if you follow, you go and reach as uh, literature, you may find that interstitial lung disease is presented as the diffuse uh, parenchymal lung diseases. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, today we will start with an uh, introduction uh, to look about what are these uh, interstitial lung diseases, or what do you mean when you say interstitial lung diseases? And uh, we will start with a uh, uh, short uh, an introduction. Let's go together. And uh, and uh, and. Uh, uh, without forgetting uh, this, uh, obvious is a long session. Uh, I thought we have parted it into the several parts, uh, and uh, but all in all, we we'll look on definition of diffuse parenchymal lung diseases. We we'll look on the classification of these diseases, etiology and uh, pathogenesis of these diseases. We will also discuss the risk factors, morphology and the presentation, as well as uh, complication. Without forgetting some of the few examples of the interstitial lung diseases. On uh, uh, as you see on uh, uh, this slide, this is uh, just an uh, a description about what is an uh, interstitial lung disease fact uh, as you see uh, this one this is a lung parenchyma you see this is seen but this one is uh, look to be a sicker one so we are going to we are going to look and, uh, and know much about this disease by starting uh, let's have uh, a short uh, a short understanding about uh, what you mean when you say uh, pulmonary interstitial when we say pulmonary interstitium, that's uh, the collection of support tissue that are within the lungs. And uh, these include the alveolar uh, epithelium and uh, pulmonary capillary uh, endothelium, uh, basement membrane, perivascular, as well as uh, peripheral tissues. Oh, as you see, this one is uh, uh, alveolar epithelium. And uh, this is a basement membrane, and this is an interstitial uh, space. And this one is the capillary basement membrane, to mention that the basement membrane of the blood vessels. And this is a capillary endothelium. Uh, uh, and the, therefore, the sickness from here up to here, that's what we call the interstitial parts of the lungs. Okay, uh, when you say uh, diffuse parenchymal lung diseases or interstitial lung diseases, that is a general medical term that includes a group of diseases that are characterized by uh, diffuse and a chronic involvement or inflammation of the pulmonary uh, connective tissue. It may say that is associated with fibrosis. And uh, most of these diseases, they cause progressive scarring, or what you call uh, fibrosis of the lung tissues. And uh, this fibrosis results due to abnormal uh, healing response. As we know that the if you have an inflammation somewhere or you have uh, an injury somewhere, the body has a tendency to, 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 to heal that part by producing various chemicals and materials in order to heal, uh, which are produced in the regulated manner. But if it happen, uh, these materials and chemicals are produced in unregulated, it means abnormal. That's why it will result in uh, fibrosis uh, in that part. Uh, also, uh, the scaling of these lung tissues will affect the ability to breathe and to get enough oxygen into your bloodstream. Uh, we know that always uh, when the air or oxygen reach the air sacs, it has a tendency to diffuse from the from the from the from the from the lungs, uh, which are air sacs, uh, and uh, then uh, it enter into the bloodstream. So, sort of, uh, we will look much about how fibrosis will affect the diffusion of air from the air sacs uh, into the bloodstream. And uh, you have to know that once uh, the scarring or fibrosis occur, it's unreversible. Even if you would try to uh, prescribe someone medication. Uh, uh, about the these uh, interstitial lung diseases, it will end up on on slowing the damage. It will end up on slowing the damage. But most of people never gain full uh, use of their uh, lungs. And uh, uh, statistical, uh, and uh, I mean epidemiological, you mean these interstitial uh, lung diseases account for about 15% uh, of the cases as seen by the pulmonologists. 
uh, someone uh, may define that uh, interstitial lung disease that these refer to a group of diseases including the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis why we include idiopathic uh, pulmonary uh, fibrosis because this is the common is a common one that we are going to look at and uh, therefore this disease these lung diseases are affecting the alveolar epithelium pulmonary capillary endothelium basement membrane prevascular and uh, perinephatic tissues if you look these all are the component of what we call the pulmonary interstitial so it means these are group of diseases that affect the pulmonary interstitial and this is a, just a short description uh, of a diagram. This one, this one is an, an air sac. This one is an air sac. We know that the air enter in and therefore the air go out. Uh, and uh, these are these that are led one. These are blood vessels, uh, blood vessels. And the, this one, this part is what is called interstitium of the lungs. Uh, as you, uh, if you, you magnify it much closer, you see something like this one. So, if there are happy a fibrosis, what is called scarring or inflammation, it means in these parts, uh, always, uh, always the interstitial of the lung is seen. Therefore, due to fibrosis, it will be sicker. When it is sick, it means it will affect the diffusion of oxygen from the air sacs uh, into the blood vessels. And that's why we say that someone uh, really this will affect the diffusion of oxygen from the air sacs into the blood stream so uh, but uh, what's more that is uh, these interstitial lung diseases can be uh, triggered by many different things uh, including the airborne toxin it means that uh, someone can acquire by uh, inhalation uh, inhalation hearing in an air which uh, is contaminated or yeah, which is uh, mixed with some of the toxic materials that will go to the lungs and cause damage which will cause uh, fibrosis uh, yeah and and the damage to the lungs also there are some drugs and some medical treatment which can uh, affect the lungs uh, but in the most cases you uh, are diffuse uh, interstitial lung diseases you have to know that they are of known case of unknown cases and uh, pathogenesis that's why we say the idiopathic pulmonary uh, disease is a commonly uh, discussed one because we know that these interstitial lung diseases mostly are of unknown uh, cause and uh, pathogenesis what's uh, another concept to, you have to know that is this this group of diseases they share similar pathophysiological changes they share similar symptoms and uh, radiological findings on which or uh, if you you you, you if you on a clinical and a, uh, and a pulmonary function changes I, I mean that you have to understand that the clinical and pulmonary function changes uh, of these diseases are of restrictive rather than uh, obstructive uh, diseases which will present with death layer which is means difficult uh, difficult breathing and uh, eventually sometimes the cyanosis which is uh, without wheezing uh, we know that the lung diseases there are the diseases that are called uh, chronic obstructive uh, lung diseases or pal pulmonary diseases that uh, mainly we focus on uh, on that is the phenomenon that obstruct the flow of air uh, along the pathway of air uh, from from the from the, the trachea up to the lungs it means along the pathways uh, and but when you say restrictive it means uh, something uh, you we focus on disease that restrict the restrict the diffusion uh, of uh, air restrict the, uh, the restrict the expansion of the lungs and uh, restrict the as uh, Explanatory uh, actions within the lungs, but it are not obstructive. So, when we discuss about uh, interstitial lung diseases, these are of, of restrictive causes and not obstructive uh, causes. Therefore, uh, physiologically, these interstitial lung diseases they are compounded with reduced oxygen diffusing capacity. As we have discussed, uh, that these are the, uh, are the uh, pulmonary vessels and this is the uh, interstitial part and we know that oxygen is a tendency to diffuse from uh, the air sacs and into to the bloodstream uh, uh, and uh, in order to to to, to uh, change that uh, the oxygenated blood into oxygenated one and uh, therefore what's happening if uh, someone has uh, fibrosis 
and this one uh, all scarring uh, the blood the blood vessels the blood vessels are here so oxygen will fail to diffuse from 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 the air sacs into the blood vessels due to the sickening and uh, the sickening of the interstitial parts which will restrict the diffusion of oxygen into the blood vessels and also someone will be uh, with uh, with interstitial lung diseases we expect to see the reduced lung volumes and we know that uh, the lungs have high elasticity it means they expand and they contract uh, due to uh, as, as as someone uh, as, as due to uh, gaseous exchange so if uh, the lungs uh, uh, interstitial parts have uh, fibrosis have fibros fibrosis therefore we expect uh, due to fibrosis someone will have reduced the lung volumes and also there will be reduced the lung compliance when you say compliance it means the tendency of the lungs to expand and contract due to gaseous exchange and that uh, action is facilitated much by lung elasticity so what happens if the if the if the, if the interstitial parts uh, if the interstitial part are, are inflamed and they therefore undergone fibrosis it means uh, these uh, parts will lose elasticity due to thickening we know that the elasticity is, 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 is dependent on on a thin on a thin on a thin what membrane to means if the membrane the thin uh, to be more elastic but if the if the, that interstitial part is so is so thick it means that uh, it will fail to expand and therefore will affect the lung compliance this is just an uh, chest radiography that show uh, show how the interstitial lung uh, diseases are presented and uh, if we take a uh, chest radiograph you will, uh, will see the small nodular infiltration and irregular lines or sometimes are called ground glass shadows uh, as we see in this uh, in this uh, slides uh, where we have two uh, we have this this picture and this one and this is lung and this is lung we know that if you take a chest radiograph of the lung always uh, you will see uh, is a black due to the presence of air is a black due to the presence of air therefore the, the according to these uh two chest radiograph they show the increased interstitial shadow in both lungs this lung and this lung which is also sometimes we can call it bilateral ground glass opacities the presence of opacities and this is due to the fibrosis so therefore as you see this one are the regular lines this one are the regular opacities are the regular opacities uh, on or within the lungs interstitium this one on both lungs that we call uh, the bilateral ground opacities and uh, therefore if we want the materials to read much about the uh, this and parts you you might go to google and find uh these two these two uh these two websites and read much about these uh diseases and uh this is was uh only an introduction about that uh parts or our 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 topic of interstitial lung diseases and uh, we will continue uh, to discuss about the other 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 Teaching that are coming. So what I I, I, I advise you are that don't forget to subscribe uh, on our channel. You will see uh, a red button, uh, a red button on your on your on your study or on your phone, and or even you are using a, a private computer a PC. Even you are using your phone. If you see uh, that a red button, that is under your and you are uh, light hand and uh, do go there and uh, subscribe and you can put notification on in order to get more videos more videos about this session thanks